Welcome to this course, Functional Genomics. So, in the previous lectures, we looked into uh, the use of microarrays and how they can be used to understand gene expression profile. Um, that's high throughput approach to look at uh, genome-wide expression pattern. That was a powerful technique people have uh, developed to understand large-scale difference in the expression patterns, even for those genes that have not been characterized before. Similarly, even understanding the genome, the way we look at the genome and that uh, being characterized as changed over time. And in today's uh, lecture, we are going to look into how the genome has been characterized and the approaches that we use to um, sequence the genome, to understand the complexity that comes along with the sequence and how that information can be used for, for example, in the medicine or understanding how humans evolved, understanding how other species have evolved. Uh, this has become uh, uh, the challenge and uh, this has been met already with powerful tools that, that have been developed. So, you will be looking into some of those, um, uh, you know, advancements in this field. So, let us look into uh, the slide. This slide sort of summarizes how the genomic um, advancements since the human genome project that was launched sometime in um, early 90s have changed the way the genome being studied and understood. So, what has been shown here is a summary of a topic that uh, we already discussed. Uh, this includes the how the classic uh, example of how Mendel you know sort of understood the possibility of uh, DNA being or the genes being there and how they are segregating. And then in the early 1990s and up to 1954 or so when the DNA structure was understood and the tools for DNA sequencing have evolved. And since 1990 there has been an explosion with regard to how the genome is looked into. So, you can see that in 1990 there was an agreement as to there has to be a consortium um, involving several labs to sequence the human genome. With that initiative, um, the, the methods by which the genome sequenced has uh, tremendously changed and many new novel techniques have come in and, and different research groups and countries have started sequencing several other genomes of model system. For example, yeast genome sequence was complete in 1996 and then you have uh, the worm uh, C. elegans uh, genome was completed in 98. In 2000, Drosophila sequence has been completed and E. coli sequence also completed in 1997 and so on. So, with however, with, uh, uh, with the completion of the human genome, there has been explosion in terms of um, the way the genome has been analyzed and that is being sort of you know discussed in the next slide. So, this sort of summarizes as what had happened since uh, uh, the uh, completion of human genome sequencing in 2004, 2005, you pretty much you have done all the sequence analysis as well. And then a large number of sequence have been sequenced. For example, chicken, you know, is another example, very good model system to under, understand uh, the biology, especially the developmental biology. Rat is another very good model for especially drug discovery and dog genome sequencing because this is one that is domesticated and a large number of mutants that you see different breeds are available and that has become again powerful tool to understand what genetic change causes a particular um, phenotype. Again that has been sequenced and then you have the closest to the human, the chimpanzee, even that genome is sequenced and, and with, with uh, such advancement what has happened is that. Uh, people started looking beyond just looking at the genome sequencing. So, what you see here in this particular uh, section is the first genome wide association study, a topic we will discuss little later, but just to give an introduction, this is to understand how variation between different individuals can confer a given individual um, resistant to a particular disease or more susceptible, meaning at higher risk of developing a disease. And, and that is what led to what is called the HapMap project. In this, what is being looked at is not the human genome sequence, but the variation in the human genome sequence. So, uh, you know, these kind of developments, you know, led to 
even um, far reaching uh, consequence. For example, there are you know when, when the human genome sequence was uh, sequencing project was initiated, it was a very, very expensive affair. So, the governments were involved, public uh, money has been put into because this cannot be really done by individual labs or individuals, but things have changed with the uh, technology that, that is emerging even first you know direct to consumer whole genome test meaning one could sequence the entire genome and understand as to what are the variants, what are the variants exist and what risk you could have and so on. So, this has emerged in early 2000, um, uh, mid 2000 and then uh, different other models for example, honey bee sequence is started and then you have uh, with all this advancement sequence and uh, correlating with the genotype, you also need to have very good database which can integrate all this data. So, you have this NCBA database for genotypes and phenotypes that has come in and then other another monkey sequence has come in and, and what you call us is again uh, you know looking into the variation of the human genome, um, the welcome trust uh, what is called as a case control study consortium uh, you know approaches started like you recruit thousands of individuals that are normal from a given geographic or ethnic region and then look into individuals who have a particular disease, but representing the same population and then compare the genome to see what are the variants that make an individual um, at risk of developing a disease or uh, you know resistant like you know your risk of developing disease is rather low. So, that is a breakthrough uh, something it started and then um, you know the even different for example, um, uh, different countries have started sequencing their own population. Reason being um, the human genome sequence has come from certain few individuals that probably not represent all the population that live on the earth. The Chinese government you know initiated a sequencing of their uh, you know population in 2007 and then the interest spread then people started understanding how possibly um, the mammals evolved for example. So, there is one connecting link platypus that genome was sequenced and then there likewise in African population the Yoruba genome was sequenced to understand how humans evolved over time. Um, and then um, it went to uh, further investigations especially on the cancer genome because uh, we know now cancer is not uh, caused by you know a, a single gene it is caused by defect in multiple genes and that could be restricted to the cell that had become cancer and it could vary from one individual to other or when within an individual it could uh, vary from one population to the other. So, if you can understand what has gone um, what kind of changes have happened in the subpopulation of cancerous cells in terms of the genome then it becomes extremely uh, you know critical in, in uh, or important in or uh, useful in treating the cancer because one it gives an understanding as to what is the subtype are we looking at different groups of uh, cancer or it is a, uh, one particular type and second by looking into genes that have been altered you would be able to tailor the drugs such that you would be able to control their um, divisions. Such kind of initiatives you can see there are many especially for cancer or glioblastoma and so on. In 2009 again another uh, you know Asian country the Korean have uh, developed you know a program to sequence their own genome. And then it is not just the sequence, but uh, beyond sequence how genome has been altered what you call as epigenetics something that we discussed some time back, which talks about how for example, methylation at the chromatin level or at the DNA level can change the way the genome functions. So, that is the initiative in 2009, where there was a, a, a method by which uh, we are able to uh, identify uh, bases that have been methylated even at the chromatin level you know histone modifications have been looked at. And then some of the commercial animals like species for example, bovine genome has been sequenced and then uh, you know you have uh, a large number of mammalian species you know the genome sequence was completed in, in around 2009. So, we have sort of understanding as to how different the different mammals and how we evolved and so on. So, 2010 onwards you know things have changed more dramatically. Now, we have um, a large number of what is called as association studies have began like people look into the whole genome to understand what kind of changes that or combination of changes can make an individual more susceptible for a given disease. 
And this is a landmark because 500 genome wide association study has been published by 2010 that also tells how the approach has evolved over time and how um, useful it has become in identifying the risk factors. And uh, of course, you have other countries joining in, for example, Southern uh, uh, African Genome Sequence Initiated. And there are many large number of such functional genomic approaches also has been initiated. One is, for example, knockout mutations. You go on mutating about 1000 uh, individual genes in the mouse and understand what phenotype they, 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 they develop. This is something that we discussed in the previous lecture, how you understand the function that is from genotype to phenotype um, uh, consortium and then encode projects to understand uh, the, uh, the expressions and uh, their correlation with the function. And then also understanding how humans have evolved some of the ancestral possible species that once lived connecting the primates with the humans, uh, understanding our history, evolution. And then uh, another landmark project that was initiated was the 1000 genome pilot project uh, that was sort of completed. Again here to understand not just the genome sequence, but to understand what are the variation that exist between different population. Here the idea is to complete the genome sequence of minimum 10,000 individuals um, in a larger uh, context, but to begin with it was pilot study 1000 genome which was completed which will tell you the sequence variants within the coding sequence, non-coding sequence, regulatory sequence and so on. And these are not restricted to certain uh, population, they have, um, we will discuss that, they have uh, you know they, 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 they selected population representing the entire um, human uh, race. So, this is uh, a, you know advancement. So, we are going to look into what really made uh, a difference therefore, we could uh, take up such challenging you know genomic projects. But such advancement is not restricted only to the other countries even within uh, our country India. The government of India has uh, funded a project what is called as the Indian Genome Variation Consortium because the Indian population cannot be called as a single population. There are a huge variation within um, different uh, population that represent a part given ethnic um, group or the people who speak a particular language and you have community, caste, tribes and so on. And, and, and therefore, there was a larger um, uh, gain if you can understand what is the sequence variations that uh, are uh, you know that are unique to each one of the sub population that represents so called Indian population. So, there was a consortium mode a large enough close to 100 individuals genome sequence or at least at the exome level meaning coding sequence they have been sequenced and that was initiated. And uh, you know uh, likewise there was a pan Asian population initiative meaning all the Asian countries including India, China, Singapore, you know uh, Japan, Indonesia, Malaysia they joined together to sequence the and understand the variations within the genome of the Asian populations because there are a lot of uh, um, migration that happened between the population. Therefore, that would one help us to understand the uh, similarity and difference amongst the population and to, to understand for example, what makes our genome unique um, and, and that reflects in terms of uh, you being uh, in a better condition or you being not in a better condition. For example, in we know that Indians have very high risk of developing diabetes, but the risk of developing other disorders like uh, dementia, Alzheimer's are much lower as compared to the western population. So, it looks like there could be something that is there in the genome that make you more susceptible for a given disease or uh, resistant to that. So, uh, this kind of approaches would help us to uh, identify the signatures if not uh, the real um, mechanism. But even if you understand the signatures that identify such subgroups, one could start working on uh, understanding how the signatures really may modulate the cell tissue and organism such that uh, you know you are more susceptible or resistant to given disease. So, this is a schematic uh, representation to tell about how the genomic research has changed over years. This is something that, that we already discussed the human genome project 1990 and 2000, 2003, 2004 the draft sequence was completed. 
Um, so, you can see that understanding the structure of the genome in with reference to um, the human genome at least is uh, done by pretty much is completed now, because you know we have sequenced the genome, the sequence is available. But what is important is understanding the biology of the genome, what does it mean? So, you have a sequence, um, so you have sequenced it, what really it means that has become extremely challenging, because uh, there was an expectation that when the genome sequence was completed, that you have understood the biological basis of you know a majority of the disorders, we will be able to treat them and so on but uh, it really did not help in that way. We only understood what is the sequence, but it has really thrown up more challenges than what has been anticipated. For example, one of the expectation was that we will have more number of genes as compared to the other species, because we are more complex and more successful. But with, with uh, this you know the completion of the human genome, we found that we are not really having a large number of genome uh, genes as compared to other species. The complexity is elsewhere. So, to understand that you know the biology of the genomes, how do they function, it has become challenging and that is what you can see here in from 2004 to 2010, such kind of approaches have uh, come in. So, we want to understand the genome, that is what you call as functional genomics. So, how the genome regulates its function, right. So, that is functional genomics. And then from 2000, that is uh, still you know sort of ongoing, we can see that it sort of kicked up and we have a now you are talking about how the genome is organized, the dynamics, the transcription, variations, all these things are coming up. But that you know sort of we are trying to understand what possibly you know uh, contributes to the normal function of the genome. But the more challenging would be to understand how variations in the genome or changes in the genome can contribute to the disease, progression, um, genesis and so on that is going to be challenging and that is uh, you know is already in progress. We you could see that we will talk about a little later, there are number of studies we have understood what is the genetic cause and how that can possibly alter the way the genome functions in terms of expression, in terms of um, misexpression and so on. So, that is the study currently being investigated and, and, and that would uh, you know lead to um, much more impact in the way we manage uh, disease that would result in what is called as advancing the science of medicine. So, we right now the focus has been to understand what goes wrong as a result you would have the disease, but can we fix that, can we alter, can, can there be a therapy, therapy based on your genomic understanding. And that is uh, something that is going to come, that is going to be the challenge um, uh, in the next decade. And obviously, you know such advancements if and when made, you are going to have you know uh, improve your health uh, condition. So, it is not that you would change um, your um, what you call as life expectancy, we may live you know in 90 years, 100 years, but the focus has been that can we have a healthy living without much of a problem. So, it is not the longevity, but you know whether it your, you know, it is the healthy living that is what it is. As long as you live, you are happy and you do not have any um, uh, discomforts that itself is a huge relief to the aging population, because with time, with industrialization and increase in the life expectancy, over the time you are going to have the aged population, the ratio in most of the countries going to increase including India in 50 years from now is going to be huge burden, because you are going to have more of aged population. So, that becomes a huge challenge for the countries to handle. So, if you, if you could cut down the expenditure on the medicine, then you are able to live better, right, because for everything is connected to money. So, these are the expectation that is how it is projected and we will see some of these issues. I am just showing you one such uh, website, um, um, which I would encourage all of you to go and look into. This is called a genome browser. Uh, from University of California and uh, uh, web website and that talks about the encyclopedia of DNA elements. It talks about uh, how uh, the sequence of the DNA and it is association with transcription, modification, invo involvement in disease and everything. So, if you really want to understand what uh, the genome uh, revolution has done to un our understanding of the genome, this is one of the very good websites and is very educational. You can go and there are many 
good links where you can understand how it has really you know changed the way we understand the genome. So, one is to of course, the, um, the data if you are interested in analyzing the data, but you can also look into some other applications like for example, the genome browser which tells you how the genes are organized right. So, that gives you an idea how the genes are organized in the in the genome and of course, there are large number of you know um, links that are there you can go and look into for example, um, what um, genome edition you are looking at, what cell type you are looking at and so on experimental matrix one can go and look into that. I will show you one such um, uh, snapshot of the genome browser. Um, this is I am going to show you a region of uh, chromosome that is chromosome 6 q 2 4 this is a gene that is uh, that our group has been working on for a long time this is called a CPMT. I just show you to appreciate what you can get out of the genome browser. So, it clearly tells that this you can see here there is a red line that is the region in which the gene is localized. You can see this is chromosome 6 right this is the short arm of the chromosome and this is the long arm of the chromosome and this is the position what you call as 2 4 6 q 2 4 that is where the gene is localized and you can see all these things. So, what does it mean? So, you, you see that there are there are lines here these are the regions that represent exons. So, this is the 5 prime end of the gene and this is the 3 prime end of the gene exon 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, it clearly tells you how many exons are there and it not only tells how many exons are there, but it also tells you what is the distance between each exons. So, you can go and look into these are the nucleotide bases you can calculate exactly the distance and the span of the gene. And in addition, it is also telling you how many variants of the transcript present. You can see that you know there are you know so many transcript 1, 2, 3 that start from here to here, but you can see there are differences. For example, this transcript start here and ends here, and there are one transcript you have four exons, but in between is there is an intron. So, how many different splice variants exist, even that 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 are represented, you can see here that is there. This is for the human, and then uh, it also talk about uh, the uh, what you call as methylation pattern of the chromatin. So, we, what you can see here is the you can see like mountains these are uh, segments that have been shown to have methylated chromatin. So, that that is you know stone uh, for example, acetylation is shown here right. And it also talks about for example, transcription you can see that these are you know how many transcripts are mapped to different regions you can see there are mountains wherever you have exons obviously, you are going to have more transcript having sequence representing the exons. And uh, th this one it talks about chip data we will talk about little later what are the regions on which some transcription factors come and bind and you can see that you know there are transcription factors that are binding close to the 3 prime end, but majority you can find at the 5 prime end of the gene obviously, because if these are the factors that regulate the gene expression they need to bind to at the 5 prime end. Beyond that you can see that conservation for example, if you look into the sequence and then look at uh, the, 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 the analogous region or homologous region in other species how much is the sequence conservation right. You can see that wherever you have for example, exons the sequence conservation pretty high you can see that even in chicken and zebra fish you find that the sequence homology exists right. Whereas, the intron then you do not obviously see much of the sequence similarity because um, these sequence are not under selection pressure they can undergo changes because it does not affect the gene function, but if there are changes happening in the coding sequence it would affect the gene function therefore, such changes are not altered. Now, that talks about conservation, but if you come um, at the bottom of the screen and these are the um, hits that each bar represent regions in which you have variations in the human genome right. Remember I, I told you about 1000 genome project and such project really talks about what is the variation at the genome level across the population. And you can see that there are large number of sites you know in the genome that show multiple variants. Now, whether these variants alter the gene, whether the alterations affect the way the gene functions, whether that changes in the gene function you know provides you any risk of developing any disease or uh, other conditions these are all something that one needs to investigate. But certainly 
that tells you that there are variations and that could be informative. The last bar that is shown here is the repeat, right. So, the genome as you know that um, has large number of repeats and the repeats help in the evolution in different ways. Um, if you have read in book that you would understand that genes have evolved uh, via duplication because of the repeats, because the repeats help at times in non-homologous recombination and as a result you have domains that are duplicated or genes that are duplicated and, and that help in the evolution. So, what you see here is that there are repeats that are present across the gene and these repeats uh, may have an influence or may not have an influence on the gene function, we never know. But what could perhaps you may want to understand is that um, the repeats at times can make the genome unstable. As I said, uh, the repeats you know at times can during recombination in meiosis, when the homologous pair come together and there is a recombination, then instead of the homolog aligning exactly at the same site, because the repeats and they are identical, they can misalign as a result there could be unequal recombination resulting duplication of a small segment of the gene or a deletion of a small segment of the gene. So, this leads to you know loss of function or gain of function and depending on how the gene affects the cell or the tissue, you may have one disease or the other. Just to give an example, this particular gene is involved in a variety of function in the body and it is very, very critical for the neurons to survive. So, if you have some changes in the gene such that the gene is not functional, then that individual would develop a condition called Lafora disease, which is very, very uh, uh, severe neurodegenerative disease. The person to begin with will be all right, soon you would have problem in understanding memory, cannot walk, you will have fits what you call as epilepsy and invariably the person would die in about you know uh, 25 years before that. So, that clearly tells you how you know the genome sequencing and all other technologies that evolved including this kind of developing databases helped us in one go to understand the complexities of the genome and other functional signatures which help anybody who need not be working on the genome, but can you know only working on a particular gene, but it gives you every information which you can use to understand the gene function. So, just to give another uh, example, this ENCODE um, uh, project, this is especially for uh, people who are in, uh, in interested in understanding the gene function. It is an encyclopedia of DNA elements, it talks about all data, for example, how for example, what are the transcription factors that bind to the fibrin element of the gene and then uh, uh, for example, the chromatin modification and then prediction, computational prediction because you know with the genome sequence you have a large number of uh, databases. Now, there are data mining softwares, people have developed tools to understand, to predict genes or signatures and so on. And this uh, particular uh, ENCODE project really, really helped us to put together and analyze and get a sense out of the genome that is there. And certainly, you know, you should go and have a look at it and that gives you more information. So, it talks about for example, the projects that are already there um, implemented and what is the road map and so on. And it talks about, you know, um, all the assays that are, you know, put into this project. So, it is good to go and look into, right. And you can basically look into for example, the data, the data could be for example, the chip sequencing data, meaning chromatin immunoprecipitation we will talk about little later. Uh, basically what you look into is that for example, is there any transcription factor that goes and binds to uh, the different elements in the genome. So, what are the regions that bind to? Because transcription factors are the one that you know initiate transcription and uh, in most of the cancers there is a global reprogramming in the way the genes are expressed. So, if you can quickly look into what are the transcription factors and where are they go and bind, you will know for example, what are the genes that are upregulated or downregulated and for this people do what is called as you know chromatin immunoprecipitation and, and, and that data you know for example, from uterus of female adult you can see that and you know you can see it from the, um, the nervous tissue and so on. So, you can get the data for each tissue of the human and either a normal tissue or from a cancerous cells. So, that really you know you can go and mine more and then get more of uh, understanding. So, that is um, a, a one snapshot of 
this particular ENCODE project. So, uh, the other application because of the genome sequence that has come is what is called as a vector base. Um, this again a database dedicated to the genomic uh, data of organisms that serve as vectors. Say them, they themselves do not uh, cause any disease, but they can uh, help in transmitting the parasites and other microbes to our body. As a result, you know we end up having a disease. For example, mosquito is could be one for example, malaria is another example and so on. So, you know this is again an, an important area because you want to understand the host of the parasites uh, which carry them and how you know the, their genome is organized and how do they function therefore, the parasite are able to live there and reproduce because more often what we get infected is a certain development larval form of a particular um, pathogen, right? So, if you can understand that, and if you can, uh, you know, do something to their physiology, probably will be able to, get, you know, prevent or minimize the infection. So again, it's very very important there. So that is something that that has come up, and then it's not only the humans or parasites, but even the plants uh, are very very important for us because we are dependent on uh, the plants for our food, and these are the primary producers. And uh, with time, you know, the, the the land area that are being used for cultivation is shrinking because there is a urbanization. So everywhere you see that there is a construction going on. As a result, you know, the the land area that is used earlier for farming has reduced down. Now what need to do? Uh, the population is increasing. So you have a challenge with regard to how we are going to maximize the production of the food grains therefore, you can feed uh, the population, but from a much a smaller land area. So, you need to make plants that are much more um, um, resistant to uh, the pathogens at the same time give more yield right at short, shorter duration like you know in the 40 days if you can get a wheat out of plants or rice out of plant. So, you, you reduce the time required and, and give more yield. So, that is going to really help us. So, to understand the plant, you know, uh, the genome, um, again there is a database, you can, you can go there is a gramine uh, database, again it talks about all the genome that have been sequenced, which you can go and look into for example, the genome browser, which gives you the gene annotation and uh, diversity data and, and then of course, the pathways involved in that and so on. So, again people work on plant science can look into this uh, uh, database to get more idea of it. You have other database is a worm base, um, likewise it stores all the information with regard to the um, C elegans because it is one of the powerful models people use to understand uh, the development and gene regulation and many other aspects. So, this uh, you know, uh, database has got all the information with regard to how many genes are there, where they are expressed, what kind of function they confer and, and all the literature whatever comes uh, the outcome is added to that therefore, one can you know have a look at it. So, that is again is going to be of great help if you go and look into. This is another model system fly base likewise is a very good genetic model to understand the gene functions and development and it is not only talks about uh, you know the drosophila genome and sequence, but it also talks about uh, you know uh, the relationship between the genes that are conserved across species. If you can recollect, we discussed uh, some time uh, in the last previous week about gene ontology. So, the gene ontology is a database, is a dynamic database which is being constantly updated with uh, the known or the understood functions of you know various genes. The gene could be studied in fly, but we have a you know similar gene in the human. So, whatever has been studied in the fly that data is fed into fed into this database. So, even if you want to now study human that you know what has come from the fly would help you. In fact, the pathways that are involved in cancer for example, you know what has been tested in in a drosophila it seems to be very similar what has been found later in the humans. So, uh, one of the ways by which people are trying to use the fly is to mimic a cancer that had happened in the human. For example, I have a cancer and uh, my genome has been sequenced, then, then the, that sequence uh, information tells me that what set of genes that are altered in my cancer. Now, the fly being a very good model for genetic studies, 
So, what one could do is within a month you can create all these combination that was found in the gene combination that were found in my cancer. You can create that in the fly model and quickly screen for drugs that are more effective in controlling this cancer and come back to me for treatment. So, in this way I am going to give what is called as a personalized medicine. I am going to tailor the drug that are required to control my cancer depending on the kind of genetic alteration that took place in my body. So, you know so the you know the fly is one such model that really helps to realize what is called as a personalized medicine. So, that is where even you know studying an insect really helps in understanding what happens in the human and even to do a treatment. So, that is the one good thing about all this model system and genome information. And uh, finally, we are going to show you one more such database called as Viral Bioinformatics Resource Center. Again, this is a database that talks about all the viruses uh, and their genome and their annotation and, and all the you know that publication that come out of this. So, that is the, uh, the first lecture and uh, we would end here and then in the next lecture we will look into how we sequence the genome, right.